Now, Tim, what's the international grain market doing this week? Uh, traditionally, between now and June, the grain market is a fraction more volatile as production in the Northern Hemisphere is still very much unknown. Uh, there's been dry weather and cold temperatures in Kansas uh, causing some frost damage to the crops. Um, although not overly concerning at the moment, uh, international markets and the trade are, are will be keeping a close, uh, close eye on this um, as it may lead to a decrease in production. Uh, global wheat production um, has been increasing year on year over the past three years. Uh, meaning we have record world-ending stocks. Mm. The big story on the back of that is that the demand increase is increasing at the, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, that basically means that global wheat production needs to remain high to feed the continuing continual growing demand. Uh, if if adverse weather uh, leading to decreasing global production and speculative short covering occurs, uh, this could lead to a price increase in wheat. Okay. And looking at, um, you mentioned when we were on the phone the other day that there were some severe weather events in India, uh, which have influenced their grain production um, and the international market further? Yeah. So there is, at the moment, there is discussion of a potential decrease in Indian wheat production by 10 to 15 million tonnes. So to put this into, into perspective, that's three quarters of the Australian wheat crop. Wow. So due, due, due to dry weather conditions last year, uh, India entered the Australian market and purchased five to 700,000 tonne of APW wheat. This year, India's condition looks to be a lot drier. Um, it has been rumoured that uh, vessels are already trading into India um, and six to 750,000 tonnes of exports are probably feasible for the current season. Such an event, um, that would be supportive of Australian basis levels in export zones However, the global supply uh, will need to decrease a lot further um, than the current drop in Indian wheat production for Australian prices to increase significantly. Right. So we we have to have a, a, a more broader shortfall for there to be a, a significant effect. Correct. Okay. Now, looking at the domestic market, is it still operating very hand-to-mouth? Yeah, well and truly. The, the market is still very thin and consumers aren't forward purchasing a long way out. Um, however, we believe there is still opportunity out there. Uh, the, with the reduction in the Victorian crop this year, we believe there will be continued opportunities into the domestic market um, as the consumers tr- tr- chew through the stock. Mm. Look, freight providers and supply chains are looking for work, so any warehouse grain should be well supported as well. Now, we've only got a, a not too long left for a chat. So just briefly, how are prices faring in the southeast of SA and also Western Vic? Yep, no worries at all. Look, let's start with the F1 barley. Uh, F1 barley delivered into the WD in southeast South Australia is at a 2.22. Delivered at Melbourne F1, uh, I'll just touch on quickly, that's at a 2.38 now with a mm. discount of $12 to F2. Let's move on to the wheat. Um, ASW and feed grades into southeast SA and WA, uh, WD, um, that's trading at 2.72 for April delivery, uh, with the Melbourne market now trading at a 2.80. Thanks so much for Tim Rook for a grain market wrap for this week.